There's one thing I really want to investigate while I'm here. Should I change how I exercise as I get older? You know, in the last 10 years, I've noticed that I've lost a lot of my power and strength. For example, I find it hard to get the lids off jars and I find it hard to pick up certain things. And I know as a doctor that my muscular strength is going to be a big predictor of my future health. Just how concerned should I be about my muscles as I age? Louise Burke is the head of nutrition here. Aha, uh -huh. so here's the Dexa. That is the Dexa machine. Great, now what do I actually need to do? Well, we need to get all the metal off you. Louise and her team have been using this scanner to study the impact of training and nutrition on muscle development in elite athletes. The same technology should be able to give me an idea of how much muscle I currently have. <laughs> the moment of truth. Oh yes, well I'm interested to see what the DEXA had to say. Okay. All right, so this is what the DEXA machine thinks you look mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. By using x-rays at different energy levels, the DEXA can differentiate between my bone and the different tissue types that make up my body. If we go to a, the next scan, you can see that that's the same representation, but this time we've got colouring in of the different um, tissues that it's picking up. We've got white, obviously, for the skeleton, and then we've got some red, which is showing you your subcutaneous body fat, and mm -hmm. then we've got the green, which is the muscle mass or the lean mass, which includes the muscle. Wow, it's just incredible to actually see the breakdown of what's inside me. So what's my sort of lean mass here? So the, the numbers we're seeing here today for your, your lean mass is 40.9. Um, so I'm about 56 kilos and 40 kilos of that or 41 kilos is, is lean mass. Yes. My muscle mass isn't quite as bad as I'd feared. On average, muscle mass peaks around about the age of 30, after which you start gradually losing more than you're creating. Between the ages of 50 and 60, muscle loss accelerates. And for me at 54, that's a worry. One of the, the ways that older people die is from a lack of muscle mass. They don't have enough muscle mass and enough function in that to be able to not fall over or to be able just to look after themselves. Low muscle mass is starting to be seen as an important predictor of mortality in the elderly. But even when we're young, our muscle does a lot more than just keep us mechanically functional. Your muscle is your metabolic powerhouse. So it's how you dispose of the glucose that you eat and handle all the metabolism that's really important. It's what burns most of the calories in your body. And so being metabolically functionally healthy, you've got much better ability to be able to keep all those things in your bloodstream within the normal levels and not having them outside normal levels and doing damage to different parts of your body. So if we can just get people to retain a bit more muscle, they're going to be metabolically in a much better position. So they're less likely to have things like diabetes and they may have stronger bones. Absolutely. Everywhere you look here, there are fit young bodies and lots of muscle. It was once thought that losing this was just a natural part of the ageing process. But new research suggests that as long as we keep challenging our muscles, we can hang on to or even increase our muscle mass well into old age. And I find this incredibly optimistic. It doesn't matter if you're big or small or fit or less fit, your muscle mass is really important. So for me, having those numbers is a great motivator because I'm interested in maintaining my strength and power into my older age. And I guess that means I've got to take my muscles more seriously. It probably means I've got to do a bit of resistance training a couple of times a week. And if I'm honest about it, that's probably my weak spot. Athletes come in all shapes and sizes. And those differences in some way contribute to what kind of sports they're likely to excel at. 
check out the skills. I know, they're so fast, aren't they? Yeah. Every athlete here follows a personalised training regime. And surely that makes sense for us too. Not everyone will respond to exercise in the same way. So before we came to the Institute, Caroline and I sent off our DNA to be profiled by one of the many companies offering to personalise our fitness. The results have just come back. Hello. It's arrived. Ah, well, I'm very interested to see what it says. This is my first ever DNA test. Yeah, me too. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Is that me? That's you. Ah, yes. Wow. There's that, a lot of info That's here. a lot of information, isn't it? Power endurance response. Mm-hmm, okay. So there's a triangle and it says 29% power and 70% endurance. So that's basically saying I'm more likely to get a response to endurance type of events. Right. Yeah. And is that what you tend to do? Well, I, I guess so. I mean, I'm not exactly a, a power lifter. I didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> you know. All right. So that might bear some correlation yeah, to what you already do. The long distance running, cycling, swimming, yeah. that kind of thing. Hmm. The report also includes my injury risk, VO2 max response, alcohol, caffeine and salt sensitivity and even my optimal diet. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So what about yours, Charlene? All right, let's, here. let's check it out. Oh, okay. Yours looks completely different. Funny, that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Well, you, you're you looking like a champion already. Look, power. 46% power. Well, you're sort of evenly <laughs> distributed, aren't you? So you, yeah. you're, the, you're the perfect athlete. You could go power, you could go endurance. Couldn't you tell? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, all right, so it's saying I could respond to both power and endurance. Mm. Yep, and... That's interesting. And your VO2 max response is high. Which means, considering my actual response was fair... So you've probably got... I don't know, is that saying you're, you're very trainable? I think that's saying I'm very trainable. Like, were I to put in the effort, I could have a high VO2 max response. Mm, okay. I guess the real question is, does the science behind this actually hold up? Yeah. 